it's creatine. But that's not all the information that you need to know. So if you pinky promise not to leave the video just yet, I'll make it worth your while with some sexy data from some studies and even explain to you why you might be taking it wrong. Oh, and I nearly forgot, it only helps certain people. So, yeah, there's a lot to cover. Wait, actually, also, we're going to be going over the subcellular mechanisms. Okay, now I think I've introduced it properly. But the question is, did you pinky promise? I recently analyzed five studies, of which one was an eight-study meta-analysis to find out if creatine supplementation really is all it's cracked up to be. Well, at least in relation to memory, but we'll touch on a few other unconventional areas of brain performance that might intrigue you as well. Full disclosure, I wrote a book on creatine a few years ago. It's an absolute cash cow, selling about one copy a month. So my financial interests are absolutely driven by big book. Now that my conflicts of interests are declared, I do want to mention that in that book, wherein I read over 100 studies, I predicted that creatine might actually be beneficial for the brain. This was a pretty bold prediction for all of my two readers who, on the edge of their seat, couldn't wait to hear why. <laughs> Considering that the studies were incredibly mixed in their results, so some showed benefits to the brain and others didn't. Well, there's still some confusion on that front, but I hope to make my case to you. So cracking open this meta-analysis, we can look at that sexy data that I hinted at earlier. On the left side, we see all the studies, and in the middle, where a bunch of numbers are, we see the summary of the data from each study. You don't need to worry about all the numbers to understand, though. In the furthest right, we see all the individual results from the studies and different samples from the studies. That large black diamond at the bottom is where your eyes should fall. It aggregates all of the studies into one representative diamond. If the diamond falls to the left of the middle line, that's creatine supplementation that is actually harmful to memory. And if it falls to the right, then it's beneficial to memory. So looking to this data and confirmed by the statistics, there is a benefit of creatine supplementation on memory. But here's where I have to reel us back in because anyone with some experience in statistics will see that there is a massive error in the data. I'm talking a gargantuan error. If you look at the left side where all the studies are listed, remember I mentioned that there were eight studies, yet we see far more than eight listed here. Why? because the researchers are including multiple measures of memory, which is technically fine, except the measures come from the same individuals and the same sample, which means they aren't unique data points. This is an error that increases the power of the study without any new data. That's a big no-no. Other researchers called them out, and as any great researcher would, the original researchers of the meta-analysis admitted their error and reanalyzed the results with the appropriate data. A round of applause for the integrity. Looking at that data, significantly stripped down and only using one measure from each of the eight studies, but following the same principles described earlier, we can now see the diamond moves a little more towards the center and the statistics indicate no effect. Wow, what a change that makes. So does that now mean that creatine is useless for improving memory? Actually, no. And that's because we need to peel back the layers. On average, the answer is yes, creatine does not benefit memory. But if we start to break things apart by different subgroups, a story begins to unravel. If we look at age-specific effects, we actually see that even with the correct statistics, there is no effect in people under the age of 65. Let's get you that data now. Up top, we see all the individuals under the age of 65, typically in their 20s and 30s. 
In the middle, we see the results from the people over the age of 65. And what we find is that while the results firmly point to no effect in those under 65, the results also do show a positive memory effect in those 65 and older. Here is where that nuance that I always preach is vital. If we had looked at the general results, we'd walk away thinking creatine has no effect, but bubbling underneath is an effect just for specific people. Okay, now one area that I thought years ago that creatine could have an effect was based on the dose. So I postulated that studies with the typical muscle-centric 5 grams a day dose would not see a brain effect, and studies using 20 grams a day would see an effect. It seemed the data trended that way, but according to this analysis, I was wrong. Because both low and high doses lead to no effect. The reason there's no effect is because it includes data from the younger individuals as well as the older. So the previous effect gets diluted. So does higher dose not matter then? Well, according to this data, no. However, I'd like to return to this point because my initial thoughts weren't restricted to memory, but rather brain and nervous system as a whole. Before we do that, uh, let's take a break from the data and dive into our cells where we can explore the mechanisms of how creatine might be helping these older individuals as well as possibly others once this video is finished. Hint, hint. So let's take a few neurons, brain cells out of your brain. There goes your memory of where you put the car keys now that we've effectively lobotomized you. Uh, if we zoom into one of those neurons, we'll notice that there's a pool of ATP molecules, adenosine triphosphate. But all you need to know is ATP is the main energy molecule in your cells. As such, your cell maintains high levels of it and produces large amounts of it. We won't get into mitochondria and metabolism beyond this, but just know that you have a huge pool of ATP. However, if you, or your cells more specifically, stops producing ATP, your cell utilizes all of the ATP in about one second. So, as large as it is, your cell has need for it in billions of reactions, as it does all kinds of different functions to keep itself alive as well as serve its cellular function. So, in respect to the brain, what is that function? One major function of the neuron is to propagate a signal, meaning it continues a signal from one cell that it receives and sends that signal to another cell. The way these signals are propagated is through the exchange of ions, uh, electrolytes like sodium and potassium. We unfortunately don't have time to get into depolarization, repolarization, potentiation, and how these ions exactly cause this signal, but one thing that you should know in relation to creatine is that keeping the right concentrations of each ion, sodium outside and potassium inside the cell, is extremely energy intensive. So guess which energy molecule gets used to a tremendous degree? That's right, ATP. So the cell is dependent on the ability for it to generate sufficient ATP to send signals like the signals for memories across a neural network. Where does creatine enter then? Creatine is a molecule found inside your neurons and it actually holds onto a part of the ATP molecule. It holds onto a phosphate molecule. Remember, ATP is called adenosine triphosphate, which means that it has three phosphates attached to an adenosine molecule. That also means that when ATP is spent to release energy for a critical cellular reaction, like maintaining the appropriate balance of electrolytes in and around the cell, or any number of billions of reactions, the ATP molecule has a phosphate cleaved off of it, making it an adenosine diphosphate, or a 2-phosphate molecule, ADP. Guess what molecule donates its phosphate to ADP? That's right creatine, or at this point it's called phosphocreatine. So when ADP is recharged with creatine's donated phosphate, 
we get more ATP without having to go through the more traditional channels like mitochondrial ATP generation. This allows our cells to have a buffer between ATP production by mitochondria and other metabolic means and ATP consumption by cellular reactions. The cell is then able to function faster because it can last longer before running into the energy availability problem. That's the canonical mechanism, but there are other ways that creatine helps. Creatine can also act as an antioxidant and scavenge damaging molecules that produce oxidative stress. It can also stimulate gene expression changes that are associated with better memory. Also, it might improve unwanted premature excitation of the brain cells and brain cell death. I'm definitely glossing over the details here because I realize that we don't have the time to get into it all, and I'd like to get you some of that applicable information. But at least you have a deeper appreciation for the main mechanism. And trust me, there's much more in that regard as well. One last thing. The reason that I think creatine is effective for older individuals is because their mitochondria may have suffered under decades of insult and could use that extra boost in cellular energy. Beyond that, endogenous or self-production of creatine may wane, so topping up levels in the brain could bring one's levels back up to a more healthful level. That's just speculation, but I think it's a good bet. Anyway, let's return your brain cells. But let me ask you, just as a check that uh, we didn't do any permanent damage, where are your car keys? Okay, second check question. What's your social security number? <laughs> okay, let's round this out and get you on your way. Remember, I mentioned that 20 grams of creatine seem to be ineffective on indices of memory, according to the meta-analysis. The one thing I think they're missing is a subgroup analysis for different types of measurements and the conditions of the participants that they were studied in, because several other single studies do show benefit to memory in some tests and not in others. So the meta-analysis results may be swayed by the test selected. When I say an effect on the brain, I'm generalizing beyond memory. The other studies that I analyzed, like these, showed improvements in other measures of brain performance. And these studies were not limited to older individuals. And in some, the research was performed with 20 grams of creatine a day. We're talking in the neighborhood of reaction time. Uh, decision-making, mood, and other areas of interest. I also think that the amount of strain that the brain is under, meaning easy performance task versus difficult performance task, has an effect and changes the requirement for higher creatine doses, even if several studies do show benefit with five grams only. I think that you could accuse me of sticking to a dead hypothesis that 20 grams may have some slightly greater benefits than five grams. And I think you'd have me with wisps of data as a meager defense. But for the time being, I'll acknowledge that most people under the age of 65, 20 grams is unnecessary. And even five grams may be unnecessary in certain metrics of memory. However, those 65 and older would likely gain benefit from creatine in relation to memory at 5 grams or maybe even larger doses. In other areas of neurophysiology and brain performance as a whole, I do think that creatine is a benefit for more than just older individuals. And I also tentatively believe that more than 5 grams might offer some slight benefits over 5 grams. But... That's speculation and not backed by any data because none has actually compared the two doses except in general memory. So my hypothesis is based on other indices of brain performance. If my opinion changes, I'll add an amendment below this video. We'll get into more specifics on other areas of brain health and performance in future content, but for now, if you're interested in a deep dive on the topic, I'd highly recommend my detailed study analysis here, where I will go far more into depth on the topic, which releases in two days after this video is published, and otherwise, check out some of my other content that might be of interest to you. And seriously, write out your social security number so that I know that you know that you're okay after that lobotomy. Yeah.